looking for a sentiment. Okay. So we're going to be doing a little bit of everything today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. There's all kinds of fun stuff happening. All kinds, all kinds. How are you guys? Karen, good morning. Right, Michelle? Today's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great week. It's a good day to have a good day. All right. So I have the cute little set out how strong you are. Um, we're actually going to go to this second because first, and let me set a piece of paper here so you don't have the glare from the light. Um, first, we are going to do a little bit of watercoloring. And I'll actually end up setting my watercolors there. All right, so I have my two cups of water here, dirty clean. Um, thanks to Kaylee for buying me these cute little espresso mugs that are perfect for watercoloring. Um, and I have one of my super duper cool Escoda brushes. This is number four. Um, I like this size for what I'm doing because it's um, not precise. I know, scary. I'm doing a not precise thing. So I'm going to start by taking my Distressed Ink Sprayer because I don't have a fancy sprayer. And I'm just going to spray both sides of my paper. Um, not a super heavy spray, but, you know, just enough. And I'm just going to set that down. Now I could tape this down, but I'm not doing anything like wicked precise on this. So um, then I have just this kind of junk brush and I'm going to brush the front of this paper. And I'm doing the watercolor part first so that we um, can let it sit and dry while I do the coloring part. Okay, so I've gotten the paper fairly wet. I also have a paper towel sitting here. And I'm um, going to get my brush wet. And I'm just going to go in it to some of these blues. And I'm just going to let them bloom. I'm just going to draw spots and let them bloom. Some teal. This is a fun way to make a very impactful background. You guys can hear the garbage truck outside, I'm sure. Today's garbage day. What are y'all doing today? Hello, everyone. Um, the water, spraying the water on the paper. Um, that's so that it doesn't like curl up majorly in one direction. If you um, don't spray the back of your paper, it will all totally curl up. So I spray both sides of the paper so that it doesn't curl as much. And I'm just using all, <laughs> all the blues. These are Daniel Smith watercolors. And, ooh, that's like a purpley one. That's so pretty. So you can see how the front of my paper is wetter than the back of my paper. So it is doing, it's folding up. And I love just watching these bloom. Now, you'll see as I get a little bit further into this, what I'm gonna do. I'm basically setting this up.
You can um, use this kind of technique to make a galaxy too. Whatever the case, you just want a lot of paint. <gasps> Look at that gorgeous teal. It looks like a hot mess, I know, it's okay. Don't be scared. I'm just showing you that a bunch of people probably have, at some time or another, purchased some watercolors. And this is a fun way to put them to use without feeling like you gotta be some sort of watercolor expert. So I'm gonna wipe off my brush. Good morning, Nona, from far, far away. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my spray again. And I'm pretty much wetting the heck out of this paper. And then I'm going to roll it around. Now, I'm using Fabriano paper. And so it can handle a lot of water. Okay. So, I have this super cool, like, super artsy, crazy background. And I'm just gonna take my brush and kind of fill some of these white spots in. And then I'm gonna let that dry. Now you can speed dry this. I feel like I want a little bit more of that purple color. That was not it. That one. Okay, so now I'm gonna let this sit and dry while we do some coloring. Ooh, sorry. Earthquake! <laughs> so sorry about that. Like a bull in a china shop today, let me tell you. Okay, so first things first is I'm going to move my water because, yeah, because that's a thing with me. If there's water sitting there, I'm going to spill it. That's what's going to happen. Dry off my board here and let that sit and dry. And then I'm going to get my little girl here, um, girl, guy, whatever. It's National Peanut Butter Day, just in case you guys did not know that. I just got a notification on my phone that it's National Peanut Butter Day. Like, how's that a bad thing? It is a bad thing for me because I am now allergic to peanuts. Stupid. Okay, so I have E triple zero. I'm gonna color in the skin. As you can tell, we're making a nautical card today. I don't know why, it just came to me that I wanted to use the little navy kid and make a nautical card, so here we are doing it. E04. 
You guys are awfully quiet today. Who's out there? Who's hanging out? I'm so excited. I'm getting really close to my trip to Texas to go hang out with Sandy and do the spring break virtual retreat. Who's going to the spring break virtual retreat? I'm so excited. You guys, it's going to be so fun. We have quite the lineup of projects and people teaching. We have the amazing Miss Lydia doing some gel press. We have the incredible Leah. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if cookie butter has peanuts or not. I'm sure some of it does, but it depends on what, what kind it is. Um, we have Leah doing mixed media. We have Tyler. We have Sandy. We have myself. Oh my gosh. There's so many cool projects. There's the Digis. Oh my gosh. If you guys have signed up and gotten the email with the Digis, oh, they're so stinking adorable. Holy crikeys. It's worth the money just for the Digis. I love them. I love them mucho. Ah. It's not letting me tag Sandy. Um, Michelle, do you mind tagging Sandy for me? Pretty please. So I'm going to try to color this girl fairly fast um, because we have multiple elements of this card to achieve. And I may end up drying this watercolor with my heat gun because I have other pieces of it that are going to need to dry as well. I don't like this line. There we go. Ashley, what's up? <laughs> you guys are here. <sighs> Teacher's pet. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Okay, so I'm gonna color her uniform. Um, first of all, I'm gonna grab my C markers. So I have C3, C1, C00, and then my colorless blender. And this is how I'm going to achieve white. Um, I like to color the white before I color anything else. That way I don't um, drag anything else into the white. So I haven't colored her hair, I haven't colored her shoes or her scarf or anything like that. Um, and we're gonna start with this. So, I'm gonna use this C3 very sparingly, and um, the Navy people generally crease their covers like this. This is not a hat, it's a cover, because it covers your head. And there's generally a crease right here. So I'm gonna draw that in. Good morning, good morning. And then I always called this the Cracker Jack Boy uniform because it looks like the sailor uniform that the kid on the Cracker Jack box is wearing. That's dating myself. Okay, 
So we're just giving the idea of shadows at this point. Oops, you call Will Cracker Jack. <laughs> haven't had Cracker Jacks in ages. Um, yeah, this is this is quite the uniform. Let me tell you, it's a whole lot of white. I have a very off-color story about this uniform. Ashley, you will um, enjoy it. I'll have to tell you one day because you and Will will laugh really hard at it. Okay, so there we go. There's a lot of chatter about food in here. <laughs> Cracker Jacks. Now everybody's going to be craving Cracker Jacks. I am single-handedly responsible for the, fight, the spike in Cracker Jack sales today across the nation. Does Will Creases cover like this too, Ashley? Do they... I mean, I don't know if it was just like a Naval Nuclear Power Training Command thing or if it's a, like all across the Navy thing. And have you ever had to press this uniform? Oh, sweet baby Jesus, whoever has had to press one of these uniforms. So my ex was in the Navy and um, let's just call it an unhealthy relationship an abusive relationship to say the least. And he brought his entire unit, um, their uniforms home to me to press um, for inspection. And so I was, I was a very young bride, very stupid. And I, um, learned really quick how to sew on patches and how to press uniforms. And um, this, this part of the uniform, the Cracker Jack boy part, you have to do alternating creases. So inside crease, like mountain valley, mountain valley. And I think I still have PTSD from, from those from those creases. And then the pants get interior creases. So instead of folding like this and creasing this way, it, the seams had to go that way. Hi, Rebecca. Yeah, Honor Guard's like really legit. <laughs> okay, so then I have my colorless blender. Um, so I would always get them outstandings, like their whole unit would get an outstanding because I did all of their uniforms and the Master Chief loved me. I used to do PT with them and kick all of the little Navy boys butts doing PT in South Carolina. Because I was five foot nothing and I weighed like 90 pounds, so... It was easy for me to kick all their butts in PT. And their unit was all males. There was no females. There was other female, there was females in other classes, but their specific class was all males. So. It was a big hit to their egos when they got beat by a girl. <laughs> he can do it from now on. <laughs> I used to be really good. So you take a dime 
and you roll it up in here to make this super tight. Um, well, the opposite side of this, because that's your knot. So the opposite side of this, you take a dime and you roll it up in there to make it super duper tight. Um, for their kerchiefs. Yes, we will do the army camouflage, I promise. It will happen. Okay, so this little scarf is black and her core frames, her shoes, are black. So I'm gonna start with 100. And these little scarves, these kerchiefs guys, O-M-G, not a single one of them is actually square. So when you're trying to get a perfect cut, like fold out of it, it just doesn't work. I have too much knowledge on this. Oh, well that's cheating. You can tell how long ago it was that I had to do all this. Um, I'm gonna stay in my C's because I want everything to be cool and crisp. I was, I almost went into the Navy. Thank goodness I did not. Um, they wanted me to be in a sub. And there is no way that I was going to be one of three girls on a submarine. Wasn't going to happen. Like, not, not even close. Not even close to happening. <laughs> There was no way I was going to be on a submarine, but there was also no way I was going to be one of three girls on a submarine. <laughs> Don't mind me throwing my cap. Okay. Yeah, I used to hand sew all the patches, all the ribbons, everything on the, all the dress uniforms. It took me like days. I would press them all with just a hand iron. Went through many cans of starch. I would, so I know this trick for baking the covers. You can put the, the covers in, um, in your oven so that they're nice and firm. Yeah, super awesome. He was medically disqualified? Crazy. Yeah, I had no desire. I had no desire to be on a sub. Zero, that's silver. Let me grab my white one. There we go. Put a little shine on her shoes. Okay, so now I'm gonna color her hair and I'm gonna have E29. You guys, um, in case you don't know, Ashley is the wife of Will. And Will is the service member that is um, over in Japan that is getting our Copics for us and sending them to me so that you guys have Copics to purchase. So he rides the train like 40 minutes to go to this little shop and buy us Copic markers. Oh yeah, that's a no-no for subs, for real. So, we owe them a debt of gratitude. And he will start picking up um, refills and stuff for us too, as soon as I can place another order. So, super awesome. Much appreciation for you guys for doing that. 
And then I assume when you go over there, Ashley, you're gonna take over that job, eh? Okay, so this is done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, so I store the dies on the back. Let me zoom this out. Whoa, that was in. I store the dies on the back of my packaging. And so I am going to grab my die snips because I have not cut these apart. I know, isn't Will super sweet for going in, um, already being in Japan, but going and um, picking up Copics for us and sending them back. <laughs> give him an excuse. Does he buy craft supplies too? Oh, it'll give you an excuse to buy craft supplies. Well, absolutely. I'm kind of excited for you to go over there because I can't wait to see like all of your photos and I'm just lining up this die. Um, you know how the boys do, your boys are going to do great over there. Um, I just, I don't know. I want to live vicariously through you and see how you guys experience it all. So I'm super excited. I'm excited for you. Maybe we need to mail this card to Will and tell him, thank you. Thank you for being our Copic dealer. <laughs> oh my gosh, Disney over there. Ah, okay. So this is close to being dry. It's not dry, but it's close. So I am going to grab my heat gun. And we are going to heat this so that it will dry. So with that being said, plug your ears, party people. Oh, that's such a score, Michelle. Super score. And remember, we sprayed both sides, so we got to dry both sides. Um, this paper is 100% cotton. tell when your paper is getting dry because you will get a lot less of the warping. Notice how it stopped curling up quite so much. Um, and so that's how you can tell when your paper's starting to get dry. So now what I have is I have some texture face, this texture paste, not texture face. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is opaque matte and um, I want this because you'll kind of be able to see the bluish from it, but it's still going to stay like hazy and white. 
So it just kind of looks like frosting. I promise you, you don't want to eat it though. Pretty sure. And then I have a retire, or it's not necessarily retired, but a sold out stencil. And I'm bringing this to light because I want you to know that this stencil is going to make a comeback. So how do I want to do this? I think I want to do corner to corner. Okay. So I'm going to go like this. And it has a little bit of tacky left on it from my um, pixie spray. And um, okay, where's my sorry, thinking out loud? Okay, so I have my spatula. So I'm like sitting here staring at my desk trying to find my spatula, and I can't find it because I'm that girl. And I'm gonna spread this frosting on here. It actually kind of smells like spackle. And I wanna try to get a nice even coat. Um, normally I don't care if my coat on this is super even. Um, but I do today because it's gonna be standalone. I'm not doing anything else to it. Okay. And I'm gonna peel that off. <gasps> Look at how cool that is. And then I'm gonna take Holly's favorite thing ever, the, the glitter shitter, and I'm gonna spray it with some glitter. And then on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. Oh my gosh, I should just leave well enough alone. Because now I have like a big hole in here. <laughs> okay. Well, hi, Jen. How are you? And again... Pull that off. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this up. And I'm gonna use my glitter shitter again. It's like snowing glitter in here, you guys. It's awesome. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for a second and clean up all of the glitter. Glitter overspray. It's called a glitter shitter. <laughs> I honestly don't know what it's what it's actually called, <laughs> um, but when I bought it, that's what the guy called it. Um, and I got it from, uh, Bear Creek, I think, or something like that. All right, guys, check that out. Isn't that awesome? So that crazy watercolor background, 
and then you put this like opaque stuff on it. When this dries, it's going to be not quite so stark white. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to pull out my heat gun. We're going to dry it off a little bit. Okay. You guys ready for the heat again? Always keep your heat gun moving so that you don't like bake this stuff and um, have it like bubble up. Although if you purposely do that, um, you can create some really cool textures with it. I just love how crisp and clear this stencil comes out with that paste. All right. I know, right? Laugh out loud. Okay, so I'm gonna set this over here to continue to dry while we stamp a sentiment. So um, I went and I grabbed uh, these two. And this one says, oh, hey there, what's cracking? Let's get naughty. I like big ships and I cannot lie. Um, I like... She is water, powerful enough to drown you, soft enough to cleanse you, and deep enough to save you. That's a really cool sentiment. I really like it, especially when you're doing like a navy scenario. But I think I'm just going to use Ahoy there today. And does, do I have a die for a hoy there? Nope, I guess not. No die for that, okay. So grab my Misty. I think the let's get naughty is super cute to you. Maybe I should do this and you can send it to Will for um, Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. So terrible. But it's funny. I'm going to use my Versafine. You guys, I'm determined to use this Versafine until it's not like so juicy anymore. But I don't think that's ever gonna happen. I've had this this stamp pad for like years and it's still like juicy and it's got splits in the lid and everything. I just don't get it. Oh, isn't that cool? I love that. I love it. 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 I use whatever's handy to clean off my stamps. Okay. this back in my clutter keeper from Make It by Marco. If you guys don't have a clutter keeper, you need one. Just saying. None of our desks are big enough to not need a clutter keeper. I know this. I know this well. Okay. Now I'm gonna cut out my little Ahoy there. Oh, should I make it a little pennant? 
That might be super cute. Let's do that. So I've got my scissors here and I'm gonna cut this about here. It doesn't really matter if it's straight. I'm gonna cut down the middle. And then I'm gonna cut to that point. And you get a perfect pennant every time. Then, since I cut a pennant and I can't just put it on there white, I'm going to grab an oxide ink or a distress ink. And I think I want to use faded jeans. It's one of my favorites. You guys are being all quiet again. Where'd you go? Are you mesmerized? Now, when I make a little pendant like this, I always like to have a little bit of motion to it. I don't like it to just sit on the card flat. So, um, I grab my bone folder and I usually put the tips of the pennant up and then this part of the pennant back. So now I have like a little S wave to it, a little bit of movement. Wipe up my ink. That's why I love these media mats. I can just wipe everything up right then and there. Okay, so then the last thing I wanna do to this card is I'm gonna grab one of my um, Micron pens. And these, are, these have archival ink in them, so they're not gonna go. Yeah, Tim, Tim Holtz has one. Yes, you are correct. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put like a little asterisk in the corner and then I'm gonna draw a line. And I don't, my whole point is I don't want the line perfectly straight. And this just adds a little bit of interest to the opposite corners and balances it out a little bit to where those mandalas are. So I like that. Okay, now what I've done is I've pre-cut my card base and um, well, this is my card base and this is my mat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this to here. With my Barely Arts glue, um, you can find them on Amazon too, Jen. I will always encourage you to purchase from Tim anything that Tim brands. Mine is unbranded because I bought it before Tim Holtz came out with his. And I have never once filled it and I use it all the time. But I will tell you, you need the finest glitter possible. Like the finest mica glitter ever in the history of ever to um, put through it but it is awesome and I love the super fine mist of glitter that it puts out got to use my espresso best thing ever thank you Jen We will have lots of new colors of espressos all at the shows this year. Check that out. 
look at how using your espresso to um, adhere the layers makes this watercolor paper so flat. Like, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Okay, so then I'm gonna glue my card front to my card base. And yes, I use a lot of glue. But I love this glue because it doesn't make anything wrinkle. Okay, so again, I'm gonna flip this over. And hey, Deanna! And I'm gonna adhere this using my espresso. The espresso also takes any of the chunks of glue, like the big beads of glue, and spreads them out flat so that you don't have to worry about them. Check that out, so cool. Okay. Oh my gosh, I love it. So now, of course, who knows what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab me some Sweet Pops. Sweet Pops are amazing. Cut this one down a little bit so I can put it all the way down by her feet. Pops. And you don't have to use 400 of them like I do. I just, I don't know. I'm broken in the head, so I think I have to use 400 of them. So I have a sweet pop here, and then I'm gonna put glue here. And the reason is, is for when I mail this and the postal people squish it flat, I'll still have that bend in it. Hold it on there for a second so that the glue adheres. Peel the backs off of these ones. Yep, you can go back and watch it later and it'll be on our YouTube. And I put all of my lives up on our YouTube channel so that you guys can watch them later. Please thumbs up and subscribe and comment and all that stuff because it really helps us. Oh, look at that. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So we did some watercoloring. We used some texture paste. Um, we used a stencil. We colored this cute kid. We cut her out with the dye. We adhered her to a card. We used some hand striping like Oh my gosh, how cute is this little card? I just love it. Let me zoom in a little bit for you guys. There you go. And that's our live for today. So I hope you guys really enjoyed hanging out with me in the Sweet Sentiment headquarters. Um, there will be no live tomorrow because I have to take my dad to the VA hospital for his hearing check. So nothing major. He's just you know, needs to get his ears checked again because he can't hear anything. Um, <laughs> go figure. So there will be no live tomorrow. Um, but I will be back on Wednesday and oh, thanks Yvette. I appreciate that. Thanks Deanna. 
Um, so you guys have a wonderful day and I will check you back here on Wednesday. Toodles.